folks, I uh, hope you're all good. Uh, Kieran here again. Okay, I thought I'd do a response video to a video by the user Noel Plum uh, 99, Noel Plum 99 rather, and um, his video was called A Case for the British Monarchy. Um, the video was, oh, it was six months ago, <laughs> but uh, surprised it was that long actually, just looking at the date. Um, and um, it was a thought-provoking video by you there, Mr. Plum. And uh, what I found with it is uh, that uh, I found myself thinking about the issue and thinking about my response a few times, kind of spontaneously, without really planning to do a video. And I think I've got to the point now where I, um, I've given it enough, uh, so much thought that I really have to do a video because I don't want to waste all that time wonder how much time it was, maybe an hour or something, if you put it all together or more, maybe. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I really liked your video. Um, the slight problem here is that I haven't been thinking about it much for about a month, and uh, suddenly I find myself with a little bit of time to make a video here. Um, it's actually only probably 10 minutes, I've got 15 minutes to before I have to go out. Um, so anyway, I'll do my best trying to remember some of the things that I've thought of to say in response to this. Um, the reason I thought your video was really good, I think that really was thought-provoking, was this, this idea that you were saying that if we had a monarchy, if we, if we didn't have a monarchy, the, we'd have probably have a president and the president might be kind of politicised. Quite possibly the president will be a person from one or other of the main political parties already. Um, but anyway, probably quite possibly would be someone from the world of politics and by having a hereditary uh, monarch there is some sort of in, inbuilt um, independence because the, the, nobody chooses this person so it is sort of random um, so um, but yeah I'm afraid you didn't convince me to be a, a monarchist uh, I'm, I am a republican um, and remain so. Um, I'll come to my response to that issue in a moment. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think you mentioned something about getting the heckles up of, uh, of Republicans. Um, I'm definitely don't, I am a Republican, but I don't have my heckles up. I thought your video was really good. And, um, all for hearing different points of view. Um, especially when yeah, you present them so well as you, as you did in your video. Um, okay, so um, I can argue uh, in a way sort of two. Uh, there are two arguments I should make, or could make for this, uh, or two sort of channels I can go down in this uh, issue. One is to say what my favourite system would be to replace the monarchy, uh, and. Or on the other thing I could say is what my um, is to defend what what is the most likely replacement of the monarchy, which is the uh, I think the one the one you were talking about, which is a, an elected head of state who isn't um, hasn't got much power, but is the is the top person in the country in some sense is is the head of state. Um, so uh, firstly, I think I talk I'll talk a little bit about my what my replacement, ideal replacement, for the monarchy would be, which would be obviously, in my view, better than this other, the second one I just mentioned. Um, but I think we can replace the monarchy essentially with nothing. Um, the monarchy does very, very little uh, that we need doing. And um, I can't, yeah, basically we don't need a, a figure who replaces, replaces the monarchy. Um, I haven't researched this very much, but uh, as I said, this is more and more that this video is more the result of my mulling over in my spare time than uh, than any research, I'm afraid. Um, actually, I did a slight bit of research, I think. I didn't get very far with it. And I think I was looking into what the head of state, the, the elected uh, president of Ireland does. But that was a bit confusing. Interestingly, a bit different to what uh, our monarch does. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, not quite sure what the monarch does, um, but from what I've heard, it's basically 
boils down to in a hung parliament, they have some kind of power to choose to pick out a politician to form a government. I think this has recently happened in, in uh, Spain, actually, with a monarch. Asked uh, some politician who, I think, done the best in the election, but he was still a hung parliament, to, to form a government. And according to my friend, this, the, 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 I think it was the incumbent uh, prime minister, or whatever they call him, there, actually refused to do it, and sort of like hung on in this hung parliament for a year, and then, oh, it's six months or something, and then he had... They've had another election, as, as I understand it, they, they're, still, they're still hung and they're all discussing it. Um, I think we can just, uh, we don't need a person to sort out that situation, we just need to tighten up the rules, really. Um, I think what I would do is just have a, have a rule that says that the biggest person who gets the most number of seats, the party with the most number of seats, uh, if that isn't enough to get a majority, they, they're just allowed to have some extra um, MPs from a list that they provide uh, of names. Um, and uh, then we do get a working majority every time. Um, it's not my perfect ideal system. Uh, actually, incidentally, I'm a direct Democrat, so I would get rid of politicians altogether, but I'm um, trying to hone down my... Uh, discussion here to uh, just a kind of um, the modest change of changing the monarchy and keeping everything else roughly the same. Um, I mean, I would uh, ideally we'd have an in instant runoff vote involved there as well, where um, or it would the, the 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 largest party would be produced by some sort of instant runoff vote where we vote for a party and we put the po put the parties in. Uh, in preference order, um, either in addition or, or as part of our voting for our local MP somehow. Um, that way, we the the party that does the best would be the one who does the best in in instant runoff voting kind of terms or AV terms, um, which is more like the party that everyone likes a bit, or could could turn out to be the party everyone likes second best sort of thing, rather than the first past the post type thing. But yeah, that's a minor point. Um, I think we can just tighten up the hung parliament rules. Also, I don't see why the monarch or any elected politician really helps that much in a hung parliament in the terms of this choosing one politician first. I mean, they can, they still have to work. This politicians still have to, all have to work it out between themselves. Uh, it seems that I don't know. It doesn't seem like a big deal to have a, like a whole important elected person in either. A, you know, uh, it's a person either either like a monarch, very important, costing a lot of money, or having a um, head of state where we all go go to the polls every five or ten years or something, um, just for that. Um, I think we need, um, this is slightly off the point maybe, is uh, we do need some sort of person or body to sort out um, ambiguous sort of situations, a bit like the one they had in uh, in the USA in the year 2000, I believe, in their election, they had uh, this situation where in Florida, some of the, they weren't sure whether to count some of these votes, but the voting machine had sort of half counted. And uh, in that case, it came down to the um, Supreme Court, or the, yeah, the Supreme Court of the state and then the, of the uh, nation. Um, I'm not sure what happens in our if that happened in our case. I think there's some sort of electoral people. <laughs> it comes down to rather than we don't. I think. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we do have a Supreme Court now, so maybe it, it would come down to them. I don't know. Um, but I think you do. You do need some sort of. You do need some a Supreme Court or some some sort of supreme thing to sort out things where the politicians it is, it is ambiguous. Um, I personally would have some ordinary people being brought in somewhere in a kind of big jury of maybe thousands of people making just finally making such a decision rather than it being uh, appointed or people, judges or something. Because they can be, they're more politicised than randomly drawn up people. Um, okay, so that's what I would replace the monarchy with. Not very much. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, there's this head of state title thing. I'm not quite sure if we need to have a head of state. Uh, 
I understand that Switzerland has seven people as, as its head of state, as this body, seven people. Um, so you can have a collective head of state. So I don't think head of state adds up to a whole lot either. I mean, uh, you could have all the members of parliament being the head of state, or they can pick the Speaker of the House, or I don't know, maybe the some ten of the longer serving MPs or something. It doesn't really matter what do they do, I don't know. Um, I don't think it really matters. Um, so that's what I would replace the monarchy with. Um, as for this elected head of state thing, yeah, I agree, I agree with you. There is a danger of uh, an elected head of state if we go down that road, which is the most likely, um, being politicised. But um, I think the the monarch can be politicised. Um, you you and I may have brought, been brought up in quite good times for the monarchy in the sense we've got this monarchy this monarch. Who, who shuts her mouth? Basically, she, you don't, or you don't, they, they, you don't get to hear what her views are very often. Uh, so that, in a sense, she does a, a kind of good job of being of coming across like impartial. Uh, I don't think she's had a hung parliament to do anything in, or they haven't got, gone to her in a hung parliament. Um, so it hasn't really come out, but the monarch could be well close to one of the parties or friends with the prime minister or something. It was really easily easily done. So not like that. You can be sure they'd be impartial. Like in my suggestion, um, going back to my first the first point, um, in my thing, if you brought if you drew up a lot of random people or whatever, then that that is pretty impartial. I mean, you're going to get Tory voters, you're going to get Labour voters, all the rest of it. But uh, the monarch could well be uh, biased. And have, well, maybe if they're just not, not necessarily friends with one party or, or other, they, they can have political views. Uh, quite likely to be quite um, in favour of the aristocracy and uh, keeping rich people keeping their wealth, uh, aren't they? Um, so, uh, the yeah, the... The monarch could be could be politicised. Isn't 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 that much more impartial, perhaps, than than one of these elected people? Um, also, um, the voters would be could get wise to this. I mean, they they don't have to vote um, an ex politician or someone close to one of the parties. Uh, they could they could. I don't think it's completely out of the out of the question that they would vote for some respected national figure who isn't part of isn't that political uh, but obviously has to stand to be the president um we can have rules also to bar people who are members of part certain parties um and also i think more probably most importantly i think it's the if a politician did become the head of state they might well put to bed their their previous uh, loyalties. I mean, the impression I get, I could be wrong, about the Speaker of the House in the House of Commons in the UK, uh, is that they, they sort of do realise that they their impartiality is kind of what, what, some, an essential part of what their job is now, and they kind of do have to forget about um, their, their previous party. Um, so uh, those are my those are my kind of thoughts. Um, so we're kind of justifying generally why I'm I'm kind of for uh, against the monarchy. Um, I'd say uh, the monarchy kind of breeds hierarchical thinking and kind of arbitrary arbitrary cruelty in a way. I mean, the, there is cruelty in in a hierarchy and sort of making one a person like a suit two sons one becomes the monarch the other becomes not the monarch uh it's kind of cruel um uh, i think hierarchies like if you make uh, i think it was this famous experiment called, called the stanford experiment i believe um where they made some of the students into prisoners and some into guards um and it really um don't want to use the word dehumanized because human, I'm not sure humans are that great, but uh, kind of de-empathized 
the people, and I think that mon the monarchy is a kind of it's mostly symbolic. It doesn't really affect most of us um, that directly, but it, if it has any effect, I mean, um, it it can only send out the messages that you know that you should um, that hierarchies are good, and you should we should all sort of bow down to like the this all arbitrary order that we're given, and. Uh, that's not good. I mean, that's uh, how we get real abuses happening, and uh, it kind of de de empathizes us. I don't have any evidence that the monarchy's really doing that. Um, which is probably why I'm not that obsessed with this issue. Um, but uh, it seems like this a step in the wrong direction, um, and it's probably some reason to do with. Um, to do with democracy, where I kind of think that we, you should always do things the democratic way, um, or randomly select people. I think that having a completely arbitrary thing where it's um, from birth, I don't think that's that's very nice. Um, I suppose the last the last couple of points, I suppose uh, what. One one thing is that um, okay, you're picking a random person, but because it's hereditary, we get the children of these people being thrust into the limelight, kind of against the consent, or they can't they're very young to give their consent about this kind of thing. So um, that that's a bit nasty, I think. That that is a bit uh, a bit cruel, I think. Uh, I don't I wouldn't want my kid to be you know, the photographers taking pictures of their first steps and all that kind of stuff. It's not, it's, I don't think we've, we think it's a little bit against the rights of that kid um, to do that. And, uh, another little point is that these people are, um, the monarchy, uh, are, they, they kind of descend, they, they are descendants of, of dictators. I mean, the hereditary dictators of the, the Middle Ages. Um, they were, uh, you know, they used to kill people for stand, talking against them. Uh, they were very bad people. Uh, and um, you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to praise, you know, I wouldn't want to heap some sort of honour on their descendants for being the descendants of those people. It's like honouring the descendants of, like, Saddam Hussein or something. Uh, that's, that's another thought. It's a little point. Probably not my main reason for all of this, but... Uh, Something that occurred to me. Anyway, I seem to have done a reasonably long video, I'm afraid, and uh, but I did, I think, remember uh, most of the things I had thought of to say. Okay, Noel, keep up the good work, and I hope you like this video. All the best.